So the Pure Boost has been on the market for a while now and I wanted to give you guys my pro and cons to the Adidas Pure Boost for 2017. What is going on guys, Has here, CollectiveKicks.com and I wanted to bring you guys a follow up video to the Adidas Pure Boost review. This is gonna be my pro and con video of the Adidas Pure Boost after wearing this shoe more and basically just giving you guys my overall thoughts on this model. So if you guys are newer to my channel, you guys may not know that I have a strong affinity towards the Adidas Pure Boost 1 and the 2. The 2 being one of my favorite Adidas Boost shoes of all time. So when they announced that they were going to be releasing a new version in 2017, I was all ears and I wanted to know if it would compare to the original versions or not. And all in all, I'd say that it's similar, but it's different at the same time. There's definitely some pros and cons, and we're going to cover those in this video. So first, I'm going to go over all my pros about the model. So there's a couple different shoes out here. This is the original Pure Boost, but I ended up doing my modification on here and adding the zipper to the shoe. Kind of my acronym sort of inspired Pure Boost. And then we have the Pure Boost that is the, I think it's a DRP. I can never remember the exact acronyms of this shoe, but this is a multicolor one that I did the uh, blackout midsole on. And they're the same model, but different. We're primarily gonna be focusing on this one since this is the main Pure Boost. And let's go ahead and get into the pros and cons. For the pros, we can definitely start off that this shoe is extremely comfortable. It is very, very, very comfortable. There is quite a bit of boost on this shoe that obviously makes it really comfortable. It doesn't feel like there's as much boost on here as maybe the Ultra Boost after wearing this more. But one thing I do really like about this shoe is it's definitely a wider traction pattern. The fact that this shoe is probably the most wide foot friendly Adidas Boost shoe on the market. If you have wide feet and you have not tried these, you're totally missing out. I would say that the overall stability of this shoe is a huge improvement to the original Pure Boost 1 and 2. That was one of the things that a lot of people didn't like about the original shoes was the fact that they felt like they were going to roll over their ankles in a sense on those shoes. This one definitely has improved the stability. It also has a couple different heel cup stabilizers on the inside and on the outside, which a lot of people wanted me to take these off and I just never have done it yet. Uh, it's easy to do though. You could just take an uh, X-Acto knife and cut them off if you want. I don't mind them though. Definitely another plus about the shoe is the shoes are very breathable because of this material, although it's not prime knit, it is still a very breathable material on the upper. And because of that, it makes it very, very easy uh, for your foot to get ventilation. Another big pro about this shoe is it's a really versatile shoe. This is actually made as an urban runner. So basically, like if you wanna go out and, and jog in the city, uh, this is a shoe that was designed basically specifically for you. So the fact that it's one that you can wear comfortably, casually to just walk to the office or go upstairs or whatever, um, it's definitely one that you can use as a gym shoe, but it's also one that you can wear casually and it's also one that you can run in. So kind of the trifecta of like shoes in a sense, if you're looking for something that you can do all things in, uh, these can do all things. I'd say the sizing is also a plus because these do fit true to size and I like the fact that you can buy a shoe that fits true to size with Adidas. Sometimes it's hit or miss, you have to go down a half a size, up a full size, down a, a full size. These, in my opinion, are true to size though, and I like that. Also, another pro about the shoe is they do get a couple collabs here and there. We haven't seen a ton, but we saw a glow in the dark one that looked really rad, but it would definitely be cool to see more collabs in the mix with different variations on the upper. I think that would be something else. Also, if they did something with this burrito tongue, which I'll get into in a second as one of the cons. So last pro I definitely wanna cover about the shoe is the price point. You can find these sometimes under $100, although the sticker price is up to $150 on some of the models. The reality is you can get these on sale quite often and anytime that there's coupon codes that I tweet out here and there, usually the Pure Boost is eligible for those discounts. I always try to keep you guys posted and up to date on all those things. If you guys just go to collectivekicks.com, uh, check the first article, it's always the daily deals and let you guys know. But So let's go ahead and transition into some of the cons about the shoe. This is probably the biggest con in my opinion. Just the overall aesthetic shape of this is just weird. Um, it's not bad. I don't even know how to describe it. It doesn't affect the comfort of the shoe because when this is folded over inside the shoe, it's not like you can feel any of the extra materials that are rolled over, but you do sort of have a giant flour tortilla on your foot and that is kind of weird. And so a lot of people don't really like the fact that it has just a crazy weird tongue and it was a turnoff to a lot of people. They do have other versions though that do not have the burrito tongue on the market. So it is kind of a pro that they have a variation, but I'll get into other reasons why that's kind of a con as well. Some people have a very strong yearning for prime knit and if it doesn't say prime knit on the shoe, they're not interested. This has a circular knit on the shoe 
And because of that, a lot of people are like, it's not soft and fluffy like Prime Knit, so I cannot buy it. But um, so it is kind of a con that it does not use Prime Knit, more of a premium material on the shoe. But if you want a price point more premium, then that's kind of what comes with the territory. It would be cool if they did a tiered approach in a sense where they did a lower version and then they did a Prime Knit version of the Pure Boost with the corrected tongue. Maybe I'm fishing for like a 2018 or a version four of the Pure Boost, but, uh, but that is something that I think would be uh, pretty rad on the shoe. Another con is the fact that this has no continental rubber. This looks like continental rubber, but it doesn't say it on it. And what I mean by that, for those that do not know, is right here on the front of the Ultra Boost, it says continental. So because it doesn't say continental rubber, a lot of people think it's a con because uh, it won't be as durable, but I have to say it feels just like it. I wonder in situations like this if they used continental rubber because it's easier, but then don't have it on the shoe since legally then maybe they're not allowed to have it on the shoe. It kind of reminds me of canned food. Like basically you have the generic versions that you get at your supermarket or whatever that are like five for a dollar. And then you have the ones that are like four dollars per can that is like amazing because it has that special label that everybody looks for. But it, reality is it's canned exactly in the same exact place and just a different labels thrown on top. Kind of makes me wonder about that if this is kind of the same thing. If you guys have actually worn these to the bone um, in your Pure Boost, please send me some pictures on Twitter. I'd love to see that. At Heskicks is my handle. I would really like to see if people have had durability issues with the Pure Boost. So if we're going to nitpick a little bit on the cons, yes, it does have boost. It is not as felt as other models, though. The 9317 by far is the most boosty boost shoe of them all. I would say it's close to the Ultra Boost. Some people might not agree. They think that this is a lot firmer than the Ultra Boost. This is more comfortable than the NMD in my opinion, for sure. It's not maybe as comfortable as the Ultra Boost. The Ultra Boost ST is by far more comfortable than the regular Ultra Boost. And then you have the 9317s probably at the top for the most cushioning at least. That being said, it's not bad. It's just not as good as it gets. Um, but it's better than the NMDs. While I'm nitpicking, another thing is kind of the market confusion. I mention this a lot of times because sometimes I don't think that companies have well-planned out strategies for products when they're releasing them, such as the Pure Boost. They came out with a Pure Boost 1, then there was a Pure Boost 2, and then there's a Pure Boost Chill, and then all the, the, the Pure Boost Reveal, and then all these different other versions of the same exact thing. Then you have the regular Pure Boost, and then you have the Pure Boost drp or whatever this one's called it's just weird to me why they have so many different variations of the same thing that is kind of confusing at the same vein it is nice because if you don't like the burrito tongue you have the option with the regular tongue however i did a review of these side by side and they're completely different shoes like literally everything about this shoe is different than this one so this one really could have been a pure boost too i don't know why they went with the pure boost dpr or whatever it's called versus this one. And it adds to the overall like confusion on the market where people are trying to buy something and as soon as they get something, then there's something else out there that they're like, oh, maybe I should have got that instead. That's gonna happen across the board though, so it's not necessarily only a Pure Boost thing. But I will say that they've done the right thing with the Ultra Boost. Fundamentally, they've kept this shoe the same every single time and just changed the overall pattern. I don't think that would work for something like this because it's such an out there design that this would be a failed attempt every single year. Although I would love to see the same shoe with a different pattern uh, for the next year. So we'll see what happens to the evolution of the Pure Boost line. I really hope they do good things to it because it's one of my favorite. So the last con that I have is really the price points. They kind of vary all over the place. I think this one was 170 on this, this one right here, which is crazy. This one was, I think, 130 originally, and then some were 150, some were 170 with colored boost. I get the difference in colored boost, but they had other ones that look exactly like this that are $20 cheaper for no reason, no colored boost or anything in between. It says it's the climate cool version, I think, or something like that. It's just a bit confusing and we have way too many different price points for uh, different products. I just didn't understand why they had so many different price points um, for what you're getting with very, very little explanation of what you're getting that's different. And that's, I guess, the part that's confusing. I wish they would have some sort of reasoning or some sort of justification on why the prices uh, vary up and down so much. But would I recommend this shoe to you guys? I say absolutely. It's not a shoe that I would want to pay retail for, only because I know that the market is saturated right now for this shoe, and you can buy these shoes for under retail a lot of the time. So because of that, of course, why would you pay retail for the shoe if you can get it for less? Um, I'll link some places again in the description if you guys are interested in buying the tube. But anyway, that's all we have for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the follow-up pros and con video. Thank you guys for watching. If you have another suggestion for a pro and con video that you guys would like to see, please weigh in in the comment section and let me know what that would be. And that is all we have for the video. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. 
or hit that notification bell if you guys want to be notified and you're already subscribed. Much appreciated if you guys do that and you can join the notification squad. But thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you guys for some more videos very soon. Peace, guys.